Hi guys, Teacher Nick here again uh, with uh, AS Level English. Okay, we're having a look at our key conventions. Today I'm having a look at autobiographies and memoirs. Okay, so what are our first, uh, what is the difference between an autobiography or a memoir? Okay, so an autobiography is an account of a person's entire life. Okay, I'm a big fan of... Uh, uh, Winston Churchill, okay, I've read his autobiography, um, Michael Caine, another person, okay, so an autobiography is about their entire lives, okay, memoirs is normally only a certain part of their life, okay, so let's have a look at some of those key conventions, okay, of an autobiography uh, or a memoir, okay, so an autobiography, remember guys, it is personal, I wrote it. It's about me. So usually they're going to be written in the first person. Okay. Although sometimes writers might do it in the third person. Why do you think that might be? Okay. So they might write it in the third person for effect to create a certain amount of uh, distance from the audience or a certain amount of distance from what they've been through in their lives. Okay, so uh, here's a couple of examples of uh, autobiographies. Uh, Benjamin Franklin, uh, an American, uh, one of the founding fathers in America. John Cleese, a uh, comedian, uh, well known for Monty Python. And then of course, one of my favorite uh, comedians, uh, Peter Kay. Okay. But what are these key conventions? So key conventions, what are we looking for when, when we're looking you know, at those, those uh, um, uh, points that, you know, when we're having to either write or when we're having to analyze, okay? So a, the, uh, a, an autobiography, an autobiography is going to focus on key dates and facts uh, to an author's life. So I'm looking specifically at uh, Mo Farah, okay, um, a British runner. He was born originally in March in 1983. Uh, his father died when he was uh, four years old. He was separated from his mum and he survived on the streets of Mogadishu in Somalia. Okay, uh, he was then trial, child trafficked to the UK at the age of nine. Okay, and uh, he finally obtained his British, British, his British citizenship in July of 2000. Okay, so these are key dates and key facts that relate specific to the, the author's life, things that might have had an impact on him. Okay, so they're going to record those significant moments or experiences. So uh, one of those key moments in his life was uh, at 13 years old, okay, he represented uh, his local uh, area, Hunslow, in a cross country, okay, in the 1994 London Youth Games, okay. Or there might be anecdotes, okay. So uh, during the 2007 uh, uh, European Indoor Championships, uh, Farah fell, and amid the confusion, he he started running in the wrong direction. Okay, or those more substantial formative moments. So like when he won uh, his two gold medals at the London Olympics and two gold medals at the Rio de Janeiro Olympics, or when he was knighted by um, Her Majesty the Queen in 2013. Key moments in their lives. Okay, or uh, significant places. Okay, that have basically affected uh, the, the person, okay? So, for example, uh, he was born in Somalia, which was at that time in the middle of a civil war, okay? Or obviously coming to the UK, arriving in Feltham in the UK, it, it's a significant place, somewhere that basically would have had an impact on him, okay? And when he got married in, in Richmond, in London, Okay, I'm sure that that place was chosen. It was a very special place and remains a special place for both Mo and his wife. 
or when he launched his autobiography at Canary Wharf in London. So places that basically he will remember for the rest of his life. Uh, Rio de Janeiro, I'm sure, would be very, very important to him. Okay. Often as well, they're going to reflect on people who have been a big influence in their lives as well. Okay. So, for example, uh, when Mo started going to school at the age of uh, 12 years old, after speaking to the, uh, the, um, the PE teacher, the physical uh, teacher, um, they basically found out that he had been trafficked uh, from uh, Somalia and, that, uh, uh, and then basically contacted social services, which basically rescued him. Or the fact that uh, uh, Eddie Kunukundus paid uh, the legal fees to complete his naturalization as a British citizen. Okay. Or when he went and moved in with uh, the runner uh, Craig Motram. Okay. The Australian Craig Motram in 2005. Uh, there was them. There were some uh, Kenyan runners. They all lived together and all they did was basically eat, sleep and run. Eat, sleep and run. Okay. Or his coaches. Uh, Alan Story and, and Mark Rowland, okay, they supported him uh, as his coaches. Or Paula Radcliffe, okay, another famous uh, uh, British runner, okay, before his 5,000 meters uh, final, uh, she inspired Farrow with a few of her words. So these are people that have had a big influence on Mo Farrow's life, okay, or they will sometimes be written, and okay, so the autobiographies will be written normally in the past tense, but they may reflect on certain things that are present in the writer's life currently, because they're still part of his life. Okay, so Mo Farah is a big fan of, of Arsenal Football Club. Don't know why. Okay, and he has indicated that basically he wants to uh, become the fitness coach for Arsenal uh, uh, FC, okay, uh, you know, once he retires from running. However, he's not choosing the right team. The best team in the world is AFC Wimbledon. It's my home team, okay, and I'm hoping that all of you are going to uh, go and look up AFC Wimbledon and find out more about why it's the most amazing team in the world. Might not be uh, in the championship or the premiership, but it's still the best team in the world. So, guys, don't forget uh, to like and subscribe. Special thanks to John Cleese, Benjamin Franklin, and of course, Peter Kay, and very especially uh, Mo Farah, and a very special mention to my own football team, AFC Wimbledon, okay? You can see down in the link there uh, how you can join their YouTube channel. I will put some other uh, people like uh, um, Teacher Adna from Angulearn, Mrs. Imram from her channel. I'll put the links in the bottom here. Um, you guys are awesome. You rock. Have a wonderful day and uh, uh, keep studying.